morning, I'm Debbie. Today I have the joy and privilege to share from Genesis 18 verses 16 to 33. Sometimes in our Bibles it's called Abraham intercedes for Sodom or Abraham pleads for Sodom. In our passage today we find Abraham and the Lord God himself interacting and sharing hearts. In the previous passage, three men came to visit. Abraham sees them and rushes out and offers them hospitality. During that time, it becomes clear that one of them is the Lord and he promises that he will return this time next year and that Sarah will have a child. They will have an heir, an heir to the promise. As they were leaving, the Lord seems to have a moment of speaking to himself where he says, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? It's as if he wants to confide in Abraham about what he plans to do, that he plans to visit Sodom to see if the outcry against the region is true. So here we find Abraham pleading with the Lord when he discovers that what the Lord is planning to do, that the town of Sodom, which is in such a dire situation, so desperate, that the Lord can only destroy it because of all the unbearable things that are happening there. And yet Abraham was pleading with the Lord. No doubt he was aware that his nephew Lot was living there and naturally, instinctively pleading to God, saying, Surely you wouldn't do such a thing, destroying the righteous along with the wicked? Why would you be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same? Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? Surely, surely. What is stunning is that the God of the universe, the one true God, yields to Abraham as he pleads, as he boldly barters his way down from 50 good men to 10. In the end, not even 10 were found. I can only imagine what that must have felt like to the Lord. To know that and yet in his mercies to still allowed Abraham to intercede. Two things that really stood out from this passage were that God was building his relationship with Abraham and Abraham was moving in his relationship towards God. From God's point of view, God had promises to Abraham, a covenant. He was committed to make every part of that covenant come to pass. Abraham himself was faithful in believing God for this. We too have covenant relationship with God through the new covenant of the blood of Jesus. We have that access to speak to God, to pray and to intercede. As I said, the other thing that impacted me was how Abraham was moving in his relationship towards God. As I read this passage this time through, I was impacted by how much movement there was how Abraham ran out to meet the three as they came to his tent, how he was active in pursuing God, how he invited them in and offered them a meal and hospitality, how he walked out with them as they left, how he stood in front of the Lord as he interceded, saying, surely, surely, he was bold and persistent. I believe today, for me certainly, there is an invitation to move, to move towards the Lord, to wait for him, and if we see him, to rush out and meet him, to invite him in, to host him, to bless him with our worship and our praise. If he wants to share his heart with me, with us, to listen. If he shares his plans and his intentions, to stand before him and sometimes pray and plead and learn, to press in and keep going. I believe there is so much he wants to share with each of us. As believers, each of us is unique and in perfect relationship with perfect access to the throne of God. If I'm honest, I still don't fully understand about the mystery of prayer and intercession. But I do know what it's like for me, so I'll share a little bit of that. For me, it's a place of relationship. It's a place of sharing hearts, 
It's a place of learning. It's a place where I want to run when things seem overwhelming. I can pray, surely not, surely not, until he slowly reveals to me his heart and his mercy. And I can say, nevertheless, your will be done, Lord. It's a place of moving and a place of changing, where we can move towards him and he changes us. As we ask him to move or relent or change a situation, then he moves and changes our hearts. It's like our very DNA changes to become like him. Thank you for listening today. I pray God will bless us richly as we move and grow in relationship with him. Amen.